The Supreme Court says it will make a decision on whether to limit access to a key abortion drug. This marks the first major reproductive rights case the court will hear since it overruled Roe v. Wade last year. So we're going to talk about the legal implications and the medical situation with this drug. We're going to talk with Yahoo Finance's Anjali Kamlani and Alexis Keenan to get the legal side first. Alexis, what do we know about the Supreme Court's decision to hear, to hear this case? All right, so this is the Supreme Court taking up the very narrow question of whether the FDA, when it started expanding access to mifepristone, and this is the first drug in a two-drug regimen that is taken to induce abortion, whether when the FDA made these decisions in 2016 to move access from seven weeks limitation to a 10-week upper limit, um, and also mail order, that came in 2021 in the COVID era so that women could get access to these drugs. They are made by a company called Danko. That's the brand name manufacturer of these drugs. So they're impacted. But what the court is going to take on is whether those two decisions were OK and whether that was within the FDA's authority. They're not going to take up the issue of whether the drug should be on the market at all, which happened all the way back in 2000. Now, uh, the case comes, this appeal to the Supreme Court to even consider this issue comes from the Biden administration, also comes from uh, Danko, the manufacturer, as well as the FDA. The other side of the case, the defendants here, they're the ones who won the case in the Fifth Circuit and also at the district court level. They are a group of independent doctors, as well as uh, a group of um, a medical organization that represents doctors. They say that they should not be required to carry out abortions because it's wasting their resources and it's against their moral uh, considerations to be performing when these these procedures when women come to them in emergency situations. And unsurprisingly, this all happened in Texas. Starting off, we know that that's been a key state with all of these discussions around abortion rights. So let's peel back what this is. As Alexis mentioned, mifeprostone is one of two drugs given for abortion in early stages. Mifeprostone and misoprostol that's the other one. And that is actually already available because it's actually um, used for stomach ulcers or preventing stomach ulcers in patients. So there's no issue there. Mifepristone is a hormone blocker. And so that prevents the pregnancy from furthering. And that's the drug that is the issue. As Alexis mentioned, in addition to expanding how long it can be used into the pregnancy, the mail order part of it was really what also uh, you know, pushed this to the fore. We saw the pandemic regulations and approvals and sort of you know allowances really getting put on the table because this would expand use across the country as a result of overturning Roe v. Wade, which is the same uh, Supreme Court. So that's really what's interesting at play here, where that sort of started this chain reaction of conversation of abortion access in the United States. We know that there have been state by state rules that have also impacted this and really uh, looking at whether or not the FDA can continue to allow this for the country. Well, Anjali, I just want to quickly follow up with you on this because I'm curious about whether the outcome of this could have any impact on the FDA moving forward because that's at issue with Mifepristone. Are you anticipating that? Well, that's that's the crux of the question, right, is whether or not the FDA can just stand its ground and yeah. allow this to happen and whether or not this will be a problem in the future. State by state, will that be impacted or does the federal level get to maintain the access that you know, has been has been stated. All right, we're going to leave it there. But thank you for this. Yahoo Finance's Alexis Keenan and Anjali Kemlani as well.